one of the things we're saying is we have not seen this many general purpose technology platforms, innovation platforms evolve since that period of time. And you're right, the three major ones back then, uh, telephone electricity, uh, internal combustion engine slash automobiles. Um, those were three platforms. Today we have five and 14 different technologies are involved in them. Mm. Uh, so there are subsets of technologies. And so what we believe we're moving into is a period of super exponential growth. The world is on the brink of a massive technological revolution that the IMF says could jumpstart productivity, boost global growth, and raise incomes around the world. But we are not just on the brink of this much-awaited revolution. It's starting already at such a dazzling speed that it's almost impossible to keep track of everything. Fortunately, renowned hedge fund manager Kathy Wood believes she has cracked the code to help investors position themselves appropriately for the massive opportunities ahead. According to research from Kathy's asset management firm, ARK Invest, five innovation platforms are converging to create unprecedented growth trajectories for all. They are artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, robotics, genomic sequencing, and energy storage. Kathy is quite bullish on these disruptive innovation platforms and has predicted that they could scale 40% annually during this business cycle. ARK's research also estimates that the market value of these platforms will go from $13 trillion in 2024 to over $200 trillion by 2030, providing immense opportunities for everyone, especially investors who get in early. Kathy is particularly bullish on artificial intelligence and blockchain and how the convergence between the two platforms will change how humans produce, live, work, invest, and prepare for coming generations. This is why Kathy is predicting massive explosions in crypto assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Her bull case for Bitcoin is $1.5 million and almost $200,000 for Ethereum by 2030. During a recent interview with Thinking Crypto, Kathy talked about the ARK21 shares Bitcoin ETF, especially how her firm's offerings for investors differ from those of competitors. She also talked about the coming technological and industrial revolution and how investors can appropriately position themselves for massive gains. As we bring you clips from the interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Well, we feel great. Um, uh, there have been some surprises. Uh, we are definitely punching above our weight. I think uh, that's clear. I think we're uh, number three, if we're excluding GBTC, which is seeding market share because of the fee difference uh, primarily, then we are number three in volume. And uh, volume is a good leading indicator for flows. It means we have one of the top three liquid ETFs. So it's uh, BlackRock, uh, Fidelity, and then ARC in terms of volume. So we're thrilled about that. We're not, uh, I think we're number four in assets uh, because uh, I know there are a few institutional flows into other funds, but, uh, but and, and whereas ours are all really retail funds. Well, one thing uh, I'll start out by saying is we've been researching Bitcoin since 2014. Actually, before that, uh, I started in 2011 at another firm. But uh, since we founded ARC 2014, we wrote our first blog in 2014. Wow. We did... Uh, so. ARC knows Bitcoin. We did our first white paper with Art Laffer in 2015. We were the first public asset manager to gain exposure to Bitcoin when it was only $250 in September of 2015. Wow. Uh, we did uh, the, the white paper called Bitcoin, uh, ringing the bell for a new asset class in collaboration with Coinbase. So I don't think... Anyone beats us when it comes to research, knowledge, and understanding of Bitcoin. That's very comforting uh, for advisors and individuals. Uh, there are two other things that we think are very important and uh, will will be uh, especially so for the wirehouses, the Morgan Stanleys, the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch is the, the UBS is the uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, and that is we uh, we have partnered with 21 shares, which over the last five years 
has evolved the infrastructure and operations uh, through booms and busts, through forks and airdrops and halvings, uh, and they have uh, battle-tested this infrastructure. I don't think anyone else can say that. And then the third, the third variable is, uh, and again, especially for advisors at these wirehouses, um, they do not have, uh, you know, a deep understanding of Bitcoin, understandably. Uh, we are going to be there to support them. We have a sales team that had to start talking about Bitcoin. And I remember a few of them saying, just telling us recently, we didn't even know what Bitcoin was when we were interviewing for the job. And, mm. and then guess what? They got the job. So they had to learn what Bitcoin was, develop conviction and hold hands through volatility. Uh, and then of course, the last is we're we're treating this and, and we do believe that Bitcoin is a public good. Mm. It is the financial superhighway of the internet. And we have priced it accordingly. We want to make sure uh, that everyone has access because we think it is a very big idea. Though the GBTC outflows caused a steep correction yesterday, Bitcoin prices now seem to be stabilizing. And we are back above $40,000 per coin. At $40,225, Bitcoin is currently up from Tuesday's $38,500 low, a 4.68% increase in the last 24 hours, as of press time. While more volatility is expected over the next few days, analysts are certain that things will settle soon as more investors come aboard. In fact, some prominent analysts believe the flow of money into the recently approved spot, Bitcoin ETFs, is still relatively low compared to what's coming. These analysts believe the closed-door meetings and the discussions over golf rounds are still being carried out in earnest and they should begin to bear good fruits over the next few weeks. During the interview with Tony Edward, Kathy also discusses the coming industrial revolution and the gigantic role that will be played by crypto assets like Bitcoin. She explains that the coming technological revolution will be similar to the industrial revolution that started in the late 19th century, but the gains will be much greater for all. Here are more clips from the interview. One of the things we're saying is, we have not seen this many general purpose technology platforms, innovation platforms evolve since that period of time. And you're right, the three major ones back then, uh, telephone, electricity, uh, internal combustion engine slash automobiles. Mm -hmm. um, those were three platforms. Today we have five and 14 different technologies are involved in them. Mm. Uh, so there are subsets of technologies. And so what we believe we're moving into is a period of super exponential growth. So mm. if you look at the period from the early 1900s to today, the average growth rate of the global economy, real GDP, including China, has been 3% on average. Mm. Now, if you go back and you look at past periods of technological breakthroughs, um, the steam engine and so forth. Each, each time growth rates in the global economy jumped. I think, uh, I, I think we got from 0.6% to 3%. That was the jump to get us to that 3% for the last hundred and some odd years. If we're right, these five platforms will uh, will create a boom in productivity, a magnificent wealth, uh, wealth generation opportunities, mm -hmm. and could take GDP growth up to six, seven, eight percent. Nobody believes that now. Nobody, mm -hmm. they think we're crazy when we say it, but we are putting the building blocks together you know, of these platforms now that they are moving into prime time, each one having their own S curve. So uh, AI and Bitcoin, we did a Bitcoin brainstorm. Um, uh, it was our second Bitcoin brainstorm with, I don't know if you know, Rod at Bitcoin Park in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. And it was the convergence of Bitcoin and artificial intelligence. Because of convergences like that, uh, 
we think that these S curves are feeding each other and will get us to those growth rates. The history of uh, technology is it's a net job creator over time. You just don't know what the jobs are going to be. For example, in the early in the early nineties, the early days of the internet, did we have any idea that Uber and Airbnb would exist? It wasn't even possible to comprehend it, but it, they could not exist without the internet, right? So. Um, uh, I think the kinds of jobs we're going to be seeing are very interesting. Already in AI, we're, we're seeing a new category of engineers. They're called prompt engineers. Just uh, now that we're not going to need as much coding and development, AI will do that for us. Uh, we just need to become linguistically uh, very precise. And so I think linguistics is going to become uh, more important as, as a job as well. So different kinds of jobs in the short term, sure. You're going to see some displacement. I mean, we think most food deliveries will uh, will be done by drones and other robots, right, ultimately. Uh, so those delivery jobs uh, might disappear. Uh, that is why it's so important. And it's one of our mission missions and values to educate people. So instead of universal basic income, what I would encourage is that uh, read it, read up, educate yourselves, figure out if you're in harm's way, if your kind of job is going to be displaced, sure. and then figure out which of these major platforms you want to get involved with. In other news, crypto trading platform Crypto.com has released its annual crypto market sizing report, revealing a significant increase in the number of crypto owners globally, despite numerous macro headwinds. According to the report, global cryptocurrency owners increased by 34% in 2023, rising from 432 million in January to 580 million in December. Bitcoin owners grew by 33%, from 222 million in January to 296 million in December. Ethereum owners grew by 39%, from 89 million in January to 124 million in December. The report notes that Bitcoin owners account for 51% of global crypto owners, while Ethereum owners account for 21%. The report further explains the catalysts behind Bitcoin's adoption growth in 2023. It states, the main catalyst behind Bitcoin's adoption growth was the development in Bitcoin exchange-traded funds and the introduction of the Bitcoin Ordinals Protocol, which enabled non-fungible tokens, NFTs, and fungible tokens to be minted on the Bitcoin network. Strong interest from institutional investors also contributed to the increase in Bitcoin's adoption. For Ethereum, the report states, Ethereum's adoption growth was mainly driven by liquid staking after Ethereum's Shanghai upgrade, which allowed the withdrawals of staked Ethereum after the transition to the proof-of-stake blockchain. As stated in the report, crypto asset prices were besieged by various macro headwinds in 2023. Yet the industry recorded 148 million new users. What do you think happens in 2024? Do you think we finally hit 1 billion users? Please drop your replies as well as comments on Kathy's interview in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.